else. And to me, it strikes me that nobody's really focusing on that kind of long-term seamless integration issue across these different platforms. I could be wrong, but... No, I, th I think that's a, a valid point that you raise. It's not something uh, – we do it basically on a case-by-case -case basis, to be quite honest with you. When we conduct an audit, for example, we did an audit a few years ago of child care facilities, and we said we're going to do a data, ma data match between Department of Social Services licensing database – and the sex offender database, because we don't want sex offenders working in a child care facility. And we did that match uh, by getting data from DOJ and getting data from DSS. Well, DOJ and DSS didn't share that information because, as Commissioner Bradshaw indicated, there were certain legal requirements that DOJ couldn't necessarily share all of that information with social services. So we directed the two agencies, and this was a couple of years ago under uh, Jerry Brown when he was Attorney General, talk to each other and see if you can work something out. And the agencies have talked with one another and they've worked towards trying to allow that type of justice is saying, we just need to have certain protocols set up so that we can share that information so on a periodic basis, social services for any of its licensing facilities can do that kind of cross match. Right, but what I'm also hearing you say is unless that kind of matching or coordination is done, uh, it's, uh, it's done on an ad hoc basis, That's and it isn't getting done, and would that not be the role of um, Secretary Ramos's department? I think to it's be that. Yeah, I think the technology agency could really provide a tremendous service by really kind of being able to step back and think globally and working with the various agency secretaries as they understand the various programs to see if there are. Uh, databases or systems that are being developed or systems that exist where it would be beneficial to the state to share that information. But I think the caution that Mr. Ramos had is we don't necessarily want to in have two systems communicating with one another. If we have a system, as I indicated, with data that's so poor for our purposes many times for audits, we can't use the data or we're forced to use it and disclose. We tested this data under auditing standards. It is so unreliable. We don't have a lot of confidence in the results when we aggregate it, but it's the best we have, so we had to use it. So I really think there needs to be a concerted effort as well by technology agency and various departments to get in there, do some assessments of these databases, and determine whether or not they're accurate and whether or not they're complete, because in both cases we've found a lot of problems. Commissioner Kay had a question. Are you finished with what you wanted to present? Yeah, I, okay. I, 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 mean, just, I, I, wanted to, I didn't want to take up a lot of time because okay. I know you've been here well, a long time. Well, I, and I appreciate that. And, sure. and uh, um, well, thanks for spending so much of the day with us, too. And, sure. I, and I think that <laughs> it's just a. Yeah, <laughs> just, <laughs> yes, thank you for that. Just a. Just a. No, she didn't. I was in a hearing for four hours yesterday, so this is nothing. <laughs> Let's keep going. Well, I think, I mean, speaking of recruiting and retention and everything else, I think that I, I just say on, on my behalf, the legislature and the state's really fortunate to have you working well, I thank for you us. For and I, I really appreciate the great work that you and your staff and as an institution you've yes, done. I do have fabulous staff. I'm it's, a, lucky. It's, a, it's a great agency. <laughs> um, you know, it, this jumped out at me only just now, actually only after you said it, and I'm sorry we're at the end of our hearing for this reason only. Um, the 70 state IT projects under, from your report, mm -hmm. page 51, um, 70 state IT projects under development totaling more than $7.8 billion. Could you help, can you help put that in perspective? Um, or, I don't know, maybe maybe Ms. Lee can since she's with the Legislative Analyst Office. <laughs> um, $7.8 billion, that's, uh, that's more, I think that's more on an annual basis than the state payroll. Um, now, seven, I think, I think I'm, I think yeah, I'm right about that. Um, or, it's, but it's a big number. Um, and it just got me wondering... No, no, it's not. No, no, I know it's not. An, that's why I was asking for some perspective. I mean, what does seven point eight billion dollars? What does seven point eight billion dollars mean? Because it's huge, and it just got me to the to my other question. And I'm sorry that Secretary Ramos isn't here to react to this, but maybe maybe you can because I'm sure you've given this some thought, or maybe you can. Mm -hmm. When when the private sector 
uh, invest in technology, it, the natural result of it is to uh, improve productivity. That's why, that's why it's done, to either to, to improve service uh, to customers or to improve productivity of the organization. And, and, uh, and, we, uh, and we know this, we, we know this implicitly, that that's, that that's what, what happens. Is the, um, what are we getting for the $7.8 billion, uh, just as a general? Are we getting better, are we getting better service or are we getting more productivity? Is our state payroll cost, are our state payroll costs going to go down as a result of this or are we just going to get better services to the, to the taxpayers? Sure, I think that's a good question and, and looking, comparing the private sector and the public sector, if you, and this is what I've heard, I haven't looked at the numbers actually myself, but looking at, say, success versus failure rates, they're, they're, they're similar, which maybe is surprising, but because we use public funds, um, when something explodes, um, using state taxpayer dollars, it's in, it's in, in the news. When it happens with um, a private company, it's not, you know, it's an issue with shareholders pr perhaps, but it's not going to be in the, fr in the front pages. Um, so that being said, just it, it is hard to build, to plan for and build these systems. Um, the goals of these systems, I think, are they're multiple, and some of them are to increase productivity or efficiency. You look at the HR, ma um, the MyCalPays and Fiscal, they will be sort of internal systems that will allow state workers to do their jobs more efficiently, to free them up from some of the manual mundane things that they're doing, paper pushing, um, to automate things so that they can actually um, divert their time to more, to other higher priority business goals within those departments or agencies. So that's, that's one thing. Um, a, a lot of other projects that are systems that are being built um, are outward facing, so they're public facing eligibility systems, those that deliver um, food stamps or um, child support, um, the CalWORKs grants, things like that to, to folks um, in the state. Those, uh, you know, the goals of those systems are to do, to do so in an efficient manner. Those are going to cost a lot, those are, they are costly, and we're not necessarily um, seeing productivity on the administrative side, but we may be seeing some savings because we're not using people to do, again, manual stuff to de actually deliver these um, services. They're being done auto through automation. So I think in part, um, there are separate goals for why we run these systems. And to, to go back to your original question of the $7.8 million, um, I believe that those are 70 cur currently B projects that are being built, and um, it's been stated several times today that, well, you know, there's a feasibility study report that comes out, and these reports are based on um, as much knowledge as can be attained to build the system, but they're just estimates, and, and, and sometimes they're accurate, fairly close to what it would be, and other times they're wildly off because technology changes or um, people, c vendors fall out of doing that, and so the price goes up because there are fewer competing vendors out there for a solution. Um, but my understanding is that that is a, a um, not is obviously not a fiscal year cost. These are multiple years. Some systems take three, five, ten plus years to not build, but to go through the planning stages. As we've seen, uh, Fiscal is still in the planning stages, and they've been in a procurement for over a year now and probably will not issue their contract for another year. So all those dollars are sort of estimates, first of all. Some will go above. There are some estimates that will go down, although that's, that's rarer. Um, but those are for multiple projects over multiple years, and they will increase our productivity, will increase um, our services, um, but they are not cost neutral, obviously. Mr. Bradshaw. Good to see you again. Hi, nice to see you. <laughs> um, I wanted to just ask a question on the bad information from one system going into another, so you just right. populate it with bad. Uh, my experience has always been that we haven't been able to get good information because of technical issues. Um, mm -hmm. One system doesn't talk to another, and so you can't take advantage of multiple um, databases. Uh, using the example that you used on uh, um, PIA, mm -hmm. um, 
do you think we'll get to the point where you tell someone or s someone will say, if you don't know the information, leave it blank rather than putting in bad? Because I know you right. can take information and run it against the basic wage file and come up with the information or bounce it as it's inaccurate. Right. And you're better off doing that. But you need to take the techn technology issue out of the way right. before people agree. are willing to settle in on the policy issue that goes along with I would that. agree. I would agree with your comments. Yes. Um, many times we're able to, you know, my IT folks can go in and they'll, we'll just go into an agency and ask for the database, as you well know, mm -hmm. and then we'll go through and we'll identify problems with certain files or the certain records. And what our IT folks will do is we'll say we can isolate those records because they're problematic. So we at least know we have 80% of this database is good or 50% of it is good. And we'll, we'll do the analysis based on that. But what we also want to do is identify the problems we had so that we can let an, a department know you've got people either entering data incorrectly or they're putting it in the wrong field. You've got a numeric field and you have alpha alpha characters in that field and there and there's got to be something <coughs> built into the system because majority of a lot of the processes we look at now are not someone taking a piece of paper and typing it into a system it's just I have a person filing for unemployment I'm filling it out in real time so making sure that that system is designed such that if I try to put a number in an out what in a field that requires alpha numeric I mean alpha characters it's going to kick it back and say, Elaine, you can't do that. So we're trying to provide that kind of feedback. But I think your point's absolutely right. We'd rather have a blank field than a field that has some incorrect data in it because we would typically keep that in our, our sample and say, use that as, as a record as part of our analysis. And bad data um, leads to bad decisions, policy right. decisions. Right. And, and if, if the state is moving, if there's a movement towards performance-based budgeting, mm -hmm. performance metrics, State agencies need that kind of information so that they can make very good decisions. And then, um, I mean, if you order anything online, you know right. it won't let you do it unless you fill out the right, yep. right things. It seems to me we should be able to be at least that simplistic. Mm -hmm. I agree. Thank you. Any other questions for Ms. Howell? Thank you for Thanks your time. Thanks for coming. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. I have two cards from the public, um, which hopefully you'll be brief and succinct in your comments because I have a hungry group of commissioners. Uh, Ms. Gail Hannon and Ms. Marie Harder, if you come forward and address the commission. Welcome. Thank you for sitting through our hearing today. Hi, my name is Gail Hannon and I work for EDD as an employment program representative. In my job, I file and maintain claims uh, to ensure timely payments to the public. Um, here's an, uh, you know, to give an employee perspective on the implementation, implementation on the UI modern uh, project and address concerns regarding the effect of these projects to the public. Uh, as an opening statement, I would like to say that the workloads are really heavy at EDD and it's very difficult to provide frontline services in a timely manner. And although the purpose of these projects is eventually to provide services in a more efficient and timely manner, at this point in time from where I said I don't see the improvements of services yet, I do believe they will be. Um, the unemployment is still high in California and we have a hiring freeze in effect for all the frontline staff and the IT staff, which cancels out any improvements that may eventually be, ga be gained by the automation at this time. Um, we understand that EDD has requested an exemption from the hiring freeze and to hire more, more IT personnel to work on the various automation projects. The request was denied and a lack of enough IT staff has created delays in addressing problems that are connected with the automation and delays in implementing projects. Um, uh, the a few comments about the specific uh, um, projects, the call center network platform, the training for the staff could have been improved. We figured the system, uh, part of the system out on a trial and error basis. The training was a little short and not as personal as it could have been. Um, we did figure out how to do, how to do things eventually. The, uh, with the implementation of the new automation product, there have been system problems 
that need to be fixed and tweaks. Uh, we have requested, but it hasn't happened yet, a systematic, a systematic ways for employers, uh, employees rather, us the end users, to report the problems. Uh, in some cases, the problems could be, um, you know, the user tra training related, uh, in others it might be a programming problem, but we have no idea. So we'd like to be able to report the problems and get feedback on what it was, in, and that way we would know, do we need more training in that subject? Um, and the quicker we can identify and fix the problems, the sooner we can improve the services to the public. Um, uh, for as far as services to the public um, uh, and our end, because we are the ones that are speaking to the public, um, on July 15th, the electronic payment uh, benefit information was not available in this, on the voice response system. So everybody that got paid on their debit card, when they called to use that system to find out if if, if, the, if they had been paid, um, they, they couldn't get the response there. So then they had to call us. And we weren't notified that there was a problem until the July 26th. Well, the problem was fixed on the 25th. So there was a 10-day period where we were telling the public, no, you can't call us. You have to use the voice response system. So we were sending them in kind of a loop. Um, so being notified of these problems on that statewide level would also help. Um, I got some more things I'm kind of kind of cut it a little bit shorter sorry uh, you can also submit, I don't want to uh, submit the testimony to us okay We'd be happy to take it okay <laughs> okay um, and then um, uh, uh, one of the things though the um, uh, e apply for UI modernization project that projects currently on hold we understand it's because of the limited IT resources directed at other projects now if this project would have benefited customer service in a law in a in a great way but that they had to put that on hold and I, we understand that it was because they they had to be directed to other projects i don't know if the alternate base period project and that redesign also has an impact on that um but uh in order for uh for us to be able to provide better customer service um I'd like to say that, you know, lifting that hiring freeze would, uh, and having the IT people allocated to the special projects, because from what I understand, they're being put, pulled from one to another to another when they're in, mi in the midst of these projects. And I think it would help our department and it would help us serve the public a lot Thank better. You. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Ms. Harder? Thank you. Um, my name is Marie Harder. I'm a senior information systems analyst with the California Department of Public Health, and I'm also a certified uh, project management professional. I also am the vice chair of bargaining unit one for SEIU Local 1000, um, and we also represent the IT professionals within the state. So I have a long history of doing project management, and I was, um, as I think you've been able to tell so far, um, oftentimes the picture you get of how a project is doing depends on who's looking. And I was going to go in and look each one of these projects up on the uh, technology agency's IT project report page or project tracking page. And I went there today, but unfortunately there are absolutely zero projects reported on that page today. Um, I think there's a problem with the page, so I did my little thing and sent an email to them that you couldn't see anything, so I couldn't see if the, each of these projects was in the green, the yellow, or red status to bring that to you and say, okay, this is what the report says, and then let you know what we're getting from our members and what they say is going on in the project itself. So it really does depend on what your perspective is as to how well or not so well a project is doing. Um, I work a lot with Ms. Johnson from Department of Healthcare Services who was here and spoke about the KMIS project. They're working very hard. I can tell you I question them a lot. They've used a lot of oversight to get this project done. Um, and they've been very open and forthcoming whenever I have asked them about the status of it. So I have really good feelings about that project. Um, the UI mod, 
there's been a lot of issues, as Gail just um, expressed to you, when they did the electronic benefit payments. Um, there were real issues that when somebody got their cards, and many cards went out to the wrong people, but people were used to going out and cashing their check, the full check, not just part of a check, so they could pay their bills. And if any of you have a debit card, you'll know that there's a limit on how much you can get out of, on your debit card at that little ATM each day. Well, that wasn't enough to pay all their bills. And because the agreement is with Bank of America, if they went in to see a cashier to try to get more money, the bank was trying to charge them to do that process. So there were a lot of issues that a lot of the staff at EDD had to contend with, and yet they were told just to refer them to B of A. So we had a lot of um, our customers who had a lot of problems with the whole EBP process in both uh, disability and unemployment benefits. Okay, so again, a bump in the road, but you may not have seen that in any reports on any parts of that project. The call centers too, there was a lot of system downage because they brought up six centers on the same day without stress testing the system beforehand. Um, when it comes to cal pads, um, there's a lot of issues because the 1300 districts have to enter all of the data into a preliminary system before it's then transferred to the main system. So that at times makes the system unmanageable and there's a lot of errors. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the, uh, oh, MyCalPays. Um, we understand that there's a concern because CalPERS is also coming up with a new system and there's a lot of questions on whether or not that will be able to interface with the MyCalPays, the 21st Century Project. And also the staff in the State Controller's Office has, is not getting information about the status of where the project is, when will it actually be implemented, and what's going to happen to them. And that happens a lot with many um, IT projects is that the people that are actually going to have to use it, those end users, are usually the ones that get the information last. They don't know what's going to happen with their job. In my experience as a project manager, when push comes to shove, the first two things to go are system documentation and user training. And what happens is where do most of the problems come into later is user training and system documentation. It's where a lot of issues come up. Under the um, California project management methodology, there's an awful lot of documentation that a project manager has to do. Sometimes it's so enormous and time consuming, they don't have time to actually manage a project. Also, there's a lot of demands that we use a contracted project manager, a contracted uh, independent project oversight to make sure that the, that the project is being managed correctly, and an independent uh, verification and validation consultant to make sure the right thing is being built the right way. When you add up those three contracts, that can add 35 to 40 percent on top of your development costs. That's a lot more cost to the taxpayer. Does you, it guarantee? You go ahead and, are you better? Uh, I'm uh, almost done. Okay. Does it guarantee that we're going to have project success or better product? No because most times the product fails because the requirements were not accurately defined. And they're not accurately defined because you don't have the right people develop, defining the requirements. And you can't hire somebody to come in that doesn't do the work to be able to hire those requirements. It takes people that do the work to know what the requirements are. When it comes, and this is kind of important, so I would like to tell you about it, to procurements, I would say one of the biggest problems with procurements 
is the lack of managing a contract once it's let. There are no lessons, there's no training in how to manage a contract. So oftentimes, as soon as an invoice comes in, it's rubber stamped as approved and it's paid, whether or not the product that's being provided is of quality. That's a big problem. We have other problems in procurement, such as um, it's a paper-driven process in most departments where everybody is printing out documents and writing handwritten notes on things that need to be changed. There's high vacancies in most departments when it comes to their contract units or their purchasing units. There's inexperienced managers that don't have a contracting background, that don't know the rules, and there's lack of communication between DGS and the departments. In fact, I've seen instances when G DGS, who is supposed to be our guide when it comes to procurements, I have seen that they have hired consultants to write bid packages for them. That to me is inexcusable. Um, okay. I hope that you you're will take finish, these right? things into consideration as you're looking at oversight. I believe that we need to have projects, we need to have consultants help us on those projects, but we need to do a better job of managing and uh, the contracts and the projects themselves. Thank you. Thank you so much. It was. It's good to get a different perspective. Anything else from the commission? I have no other requests from the public, so I'll adjourn the public hearing. So you build out a bag of paint, and that's your front stack, and that's what works for you and your golf instructor has trained you on how to use those, and then I, I, I use some other brand, and I'm just worried about my game, as opposed to folks like you and Carlos Ramos, who is worried about everybody's game and how does that seamlessly interconnect. Well, I can't do that. I'm based on your Mizunos, I'm Kings, this, that, the other thing. Fantastic. Fantastic. Would it be of any benefit?
happen. I promise you, if you do respond, I won't hit you with a big sales pitch, but if you have questions or, hey, Jim, you boldly stated that uh, New York City Department of Education, $85 million in eight years they spent on student information systems. I scrapped it, went with Salesforce. We are in the process of rolling out 100,000 teachers and administrators again for New York City Department of Education. I think your best that you should do for the greatest impact is not to communicate with your employees. It's to submit something to the staff to say, here's the perspective. They'll pick it. They'll pick the phone. And, and forgive me, the um, whole point to that little soapbox pitch was, Jim, you made some statements, and I want some more information. Sure. So call me or email me. I will absolutely follow your lead on submitting yes. it. I'll figure out how to do that. I don't know who our project manager is. I'm going to talk to that young lady in the gray jacket. Yeah, I'll, I'll find her. out what the best way to do it. But uh, as a citizen of the state, thank you for donating your time and challenging the folks to stay on track. Very interesting topic. Good luck to you. Have a good afternoon. to hear more about that. When do you take your kid down to uh, the 18th or the 19th, whatever the weekend is before the weekend of the 20th of next month? Why so late? That's the 18th. Everybody but, the, uh, but Berkeley doesn't start until like December 22nd, and they don't get out until June. Are you ready? Is I am what's your wife's name? Not ready. I don't know about any of them. I'm not ready. But she yeah. Asked, uh, you better prepare her. Well, Hi, baby. <laughs> One of my partners took his child to Emory, and I said, how'd it go? He said, oh, man, it was pretty brutal. Well, Adam has been so kind to the mother uh, by leaving lots of things, pictures of his face. <laughs> Every morning she wakes up and goes, my kid's picture.